What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another Dose. If you don't know who I am, my name is Nasser. I'm a second year medical student at King's College London, and I make these YouTube videos to try and help you guys in the application process for medical school. Today, I'm gonna to be going over section two of the BMAP, more specifically the section on biology. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of general tips about the section, and then we're gonna go straight into answering questions live on camera so that you guys can see my thought process and how it is that I actually solve the questions as I'm thinking through them. If you guys wanna see more videos like this where I go through the different sections of the BMAT, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and you'll be notified when I release those videos. Before we begin, I again want to say thank you to Medify for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to check them out or any of their resources, you can check the links in the description down below. It'll take you to their website and you can look at their UK account, BMAT, and personal statement services. Okay, so first things first. BMAT section two is all about the sciences. You have biology, physics, chemistry, and also some maths involved. Today, I'm gonna to only be covering biology. So biology is probably gonna be the easiest of all the sciences for you guys, because chances are, if you're applying to medicine and taking the BMAT, you already have a genuine interest in biology, and you probably really like studying it and learning it. Regarding the content that's gonna come up in the biology section, you've probably already done all of it in your IGCSC or A-level and IB curriculums. If you guys want, I'm gonna leave a link in the description with the full learning outcomes for each of the science sections published by the official BMAT board. You guys can check it out in the description down below, and if you want, you can match your knowledge to every single section on there. All right, now let's move on to the general tips for the BMAP biology section. Tip number one is that I don't really have any tips. Regarding biology, I don't think there are actually many general tips that I can give you guys because most of it is just gonna be memorization and recall based. You either know the answer or you don't. There's very little to work through, which is a big contrast to the chemistry and the physics portions of this exam. But what I will say is that generally for the science sections, you have about 60 seconds per question and you definitely wanna fly through the biology questions because they're gonna be easier for you and you're gonna be able to complete them in a shorter amount of time. And then you can spend the extra time that you have on the more tricky questions for maths, physics, and chemistry. So make sure you know your biology really well so that you can answer all the biology questions with 100% accuracy and know that you have those marks safely tucked away in the bank. All right, now without further ado, let's jump straight into solving questions live on camera. So here I am on the Medify BMAT online course. I'm gonna click on the question bank. I'm gonna select only biology questions and start practice there. So I've also got a pen and paper with me in case I need to write or jot anything down. And yeah. Let's get started. In a set of genetic crosses, the offspring produced showed the same phenotype ratio of 951, which of the following statements could be true? Two genes each with two alleles were studied. All parents were hetero. Some offspring had a phenotype different from the parents. Some offspring had a phenotype the same as the parents. Okay. Uh, the last two can be true. Um, two genes with two alleles were studied. That can also be true. All parents were heterozygous. Doesn't have to be the case. Or does it? I think it does. I'm going to go with one, two, three, and four. All right, awesome. My genetics memory isn't exactly 100% clear, but I do remember this where you have the double heterozygous crosses. Make sure you know this stuff for the exam. A sample of DNA contains 32% cytosine, which answer shows the percentage of adenine in the cycle. Okay, so you guys should know that guanine binds to cytosine, thymine binds to adenine, and the way that I remember that is the acronym GCAT, like a cat who's a gangster. GC goes together and AT goes together. Anyway, so if there's 32% cytosine, then that means that there's also 32% guanine, which makes a total of 64% G and C, which means there is a remaining 36% of A and T, 36% divided by two to just find out what the A is, is going to be 18. That should be easy. Two disease-free cells, X and Y, were studied. Which option correctly identifies cell X as a typical plant cell and cell Y as a typical prokaryote? So X is a plant and Y is a prokaryote. So prokaryote means without a nucleus. Chlorophyll is present in plants, susceptible to penicillin. It's true, okay, because it's an antibiotic. Okay, that's fine. Plasma is present, no. Atomos layer is selectively permeable. Glycogen is present, vacuole is present. Yeah, I would go with row one, okay. A semi-permeable fluid-filled sac is placed in a container of water. 30 minutes later, the sac has increased to 1.3 times its original size. Which of the following statements is correct? The water has moved up the concentration gradient. No, water always moves down a concentration gradient. The fluid in the sac is a hypotonic solution, which means it has less um, solutes, so more water. If that was the case, then water would leave it. So it must be hypertonic. Awesome. I suppose you have red flowers and white flowers. The red flowers have gene type RR and the white ones have RR. They're, these are crossbred. You then breed the offspring from the first cross, so you breed the F1. What ratio of phenotypes would you expect to end up with? So let's draw the thing real quick. R, 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 R. You're gonna get 100% large R, small R. Then you breed two large R, small Rs together. And you get the following. You get the classic 
uh, one in four is recessive and one is dominant and then the other two are a recessive and a dominant allele. So 100% Red flowers, all with a heterozygous phenotype, no. 100% red flowers, 50% with a homozygous phenotype, no. 75% red flowers, all with a heterozygous phenotype, no. Uh, one of them is homozygous. 75 red flowers of which one third having a homozygous phenotype, true, and two thirds having a heterozygous, true, and 25% white flowers, true. This is the classic Punnett square. Picture below shows DNA microarray. I don't remember doing DNA microarrays in high school. Each spot labeled on four contains a different DNA probe. Sample fluorescently with a sequence, blah, blah, is washed over. Fluorescent label covered in base DNA on the spot. The spot will fluoresce. Which of the spots would show a positive signal because it fluoresces? So the DNA probe has to be complementary to this. So what we're looking for here is a G-A-T-T-A-T. G-A-T-T-A-T. Um, so that's nowhere. Here we're looking for a C-T-A-A-T-A. C T A A T A. So two is good. Three, uh, we're looking for an A C C A G T. A C C A G T. So three is good as well. Is there a two and three? Okay. So I don't need to check four because there's no two, three, and four option, but I know that two and three are definitely correct. So B must be the answer. Awesome. In the process of ventilation, the following occur pressure in the thorax decreases, volume of thorax decreases. Diaphragm goes up, which of these occur during exhalation? Okay, exhalation. So volume of thorax decreases, pressure in the thorax increases because pressure always flows from high pressure to low pressure. So if air is moving out, that means the pressure in your chest is higher and the pressure outside the atmospheric pressure is lower. So this is wrong. So two is correct. So we're between A, B and E. Diaphragm goes up. That's true, so two and three are correct. And I know that there's no two, three, and four option, so it must be B. Do you guys see why that's the case? I know two and three are correct, and then I look at the answers, and I, and I don't see a two, three, and four. Then I don't even need to look at four. I already know that two and three are definitely correct, and there's no option to choose two, three, and four. So I know that the answer must be B without even considering what number four is. Of course, if you read number four, it's actually wrong, but you don't need to anyway. Which of the following does not contain amino acids? Glycogen is a sugar. It is not made up of amino acids. Simple, simple, simple. You want to know your basic building blocks, proteins, sugars, and fats or lipids. Four students record different structures that they thought were found in the healthy animal muscle cell and typical bacterial cell. Which students gave totally correct answers? Animal, DNA found in nucleus, true. Bacterial cell, cell wall present, that's true. One is correct. Animal cell, cell wall present, that's wrong. Mitochondria present, true. DNA found in nucleus, false. DNA found in nucleus, true. Plasmids present, true. So only one and four. Boom, 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 boom. Next question. The diagram shows a section of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Which answer correctly identifies the substances associated with structures one and two? So structure one is a ribosome, which means it'll have definitely amino acids, anti-RNA. Interesting. Okay, so let's see what number two is. DNA or polypeptides. Um, I'm going to go with polypeptides for the structure of the endoplasmic reticulum and I'm going to go with something related to do with um, translation in number one. So let's see. Okay, cool. So I know that basically amino acids are also involved in the ribosome, obviously, but I know that DNA probably isn't the structural thing of the endoplasmic reticulum. So by process of elimination, you can kind of come to B. In a dihybrid cross between two hetero individuals, which is the most likely combination of their offspring? It's gonna be the hetero hetero one, this one here. So yeah, you guys really need to learn how to draw out these, uh, these squares. Clearly questions on genetics and cell biology are coming up quite often. So make sure that you guys focus on those two as well. Which of the following cannot occur as a result of a random process? Genetic drift definitely does, mutations does, and artificial selection does not. So three only. Yeah, so genetic drift is when random changes in alleles occur. And then mutations are when specific changes in DNA bases occur. And these both happen randomly. Which of the following cell organelles can produce protein containing vesicles, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, and ribosome? Protein containing vesicles. Um, I'm gonna go with Golgi for sure. Ribosome does not produce protein-containing vesicles. 
endoplasmic reticulum can. Things can bud off from there. So I'm going to go with one and two only. Awesome. Which of the following crosses is most likely to produce offspring of genotype BBWW? This here will produce a lot of those because you're going to get one dominant with one recessive, one dominant with one recessive over and over. And yeah, you guys can read the explanation here, but it's definitely right. Clearly, definitely know your genetics. <laughs> genetics has come up so much and so has cell biology. So make sure you guys know that. Which of the following is not true of human hormones? They are all released via ducts. That is not true because we know some hormones are released, for example, from the hypothalamus and also from the um, anterior pituitary. And those are not along ducts. Those are directly into the bloodstream. So I don't even need to read the rest of them. I know that that's true. But for example, you guys can now read these statements and you know that these statements are 100% true. So if you're making notes, you probably want to write those down. Which one of the following statements about both asexual and sexual reproduction is correct? Only the gametes undergo meiosis in sexual reproduction compared with both cell types in sexual reproduction. Mitosis leads to sperm formation. Nope. Mutations only occur in sexual reproduction, not in asexual. Nope. Some organisms carry out both asexual and sexual, maybe. Variation is only required for sexual production, not for asexual, nope. I'm gonna go with D. I'm not entirely sure what A is saying. I could probably read it again and find out, but I know that D is correct, so why waste my time? You wanna get all the answers and move on with the questions. Pick the best pairings of enzymes and their optimum pH levels. Pepsin is, a, is an enzyme found in the stomach, so it needs a low pH, so six to seven is way too high, so A is wrong. Uh, lipase released from the pancreas needs about this pH, so that's fine. Amylase, this is way too low. Amylase is released in the mouth, and that's way too low. It needs to be higher. Amylase, way too low again. Pepsin, this is appropriate. This, but I'm looking for something a bit better. Amylase, this is good for the mouth. Pepsin, good for the stomach. Lipase, I think this is better as well, because lipase is also mixed with bicarbonate uh, released from the pancreas, which helps increase the pH. So I think E is gonna be the correct answer. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Next question. Okay, the graph shows how enzyme activity varies with temperature. The optimum pH for this enzyme is eight. Then use flow graph for the pH is true. If they were gathered as a pH of six, what would happen? So this shows that the rate of reaction increases with temperature and it sort of denatures at about 35, 37 degrees, so body temperature. If this was recorded at a pH of six, which is more acidic, it would likely perform worse. Um, but with this graph of temperature, what would happen? Yeah, I think its temperature scale would be the same, but its rate would be reduced. So the peak of the graph showing rate would be lower, um, but how it is treated with temperature variation is likely going to be the same because an enzyme's temperature related properties and an enzyme's uh, pH related properties are gonna be separate. Of course, they're linked in some ways, but for the most part, you can separate the two. Which of the components of DNA listed below are found on the inside of a DNA double helix? That would be purine and pyrimidine bases, so three and four only. Boom, 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 easy money. Next, here's a simplified diagram of the heart. Identify the correct passages of blood through the heart. This is something that does come up many times, so make sure you guys know your cell biology, your genetics, your uh, circulation, and your respiratory systems. So how does blood flow in the heart? So of course we know that venous return blood comes from the right side of the body up through the inferior, inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava and enters the right atrium, D, where it is pushed down into the right ventricle. It leaves the right ventricle and goes up the pulmonary artery to the lungs. The blood becomes oxygenated and it comes back down through the pulmonary veins, which enter um, the left vent, the left atrium, excuse me, F, goes to the left ventricle and then gets pumped out through the aorta. So we're looking like something, E, D, H, E, D, H, B, F, G, no. E, D, H, B, A, F, G, C, B, A, F, G, boom. Awesome. The increase in the frequency of one phenotype in a wild population of butterflies could be due to an advantageous mutation, true. Increased reproductive success of individuals with that phenotype, true. And a change in the environment, all true are possible. What should happen when blood capillary glucose levels rise? Obviously, when you have increased blood glucose in the blood, you're gonna have a release of insulin in order to take that glucose and store it in cells. So, increased blood insulin concentration, true. Decreased glycogen stores. Um, no, you're gonna to wanna to increase your glycogen stores. You're gonna take that glucose and store it as glycogen. So, one, so only one so far. Decreased blood insulin concentration, no. Increased glycogen stores. So, so it's one and four. Awesome. 
Okay guys, I think that's where I'm gonna call it for today. Having had a look at these questions, it seems that very clearly genetics, cell biology, respiration and circulation is what comes up very, very often. So I think you wanna make sure that you know those specific topics in great, great detail. Obviously don't forget about everything else too, but you wanna focus on those topics. Okay guys, I hope this was able to show you my thought process when going through the questions. I hope you were able to follow what I was doing. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on the video, make sure you subscribe to my channel channel if you want to see more videos from me and leave me a comment down below telling me what section you would like me to do next. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. Good luck with your BMAP preparation and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.